Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to build this tool cabinet and install it into my hand tool workbench. Let's get started. This project starts out like most others by breaking down some plywood using a circular saw and a straight edge. This is 3 quarter inch radiata pine from Home Depot. Once I get a couple rips, I check for square. Plywood isn't necessarily square all the time, so it's a good idea to check. I also don't have a miter saw here. You will see an ongoing theme within this video, no tools I would normally use, so I use what I have. I freehand the cross cuts. It's always good practice seeing how straight and well I can cut to the line. Once I have the parts cut for the cabinet shell, I will cut some dados in them. The outside portions will be different than the middle, so I label them to avoid making a mistake. I thought the best way to cut the dados would be to lay them out, then clamp a straight edge to them and route each individual dado. I quickly realized this was going to take forever and having just watched a Pask Makes video, I decided to try out a jig he used to cut steel. I made a couple modifications to what he used and was ready to start cutting the dados. This jig allows me to just line up the cut line, clamp the workpiece, and make the cut. Now I ran into a layout problem on the inner pieces. I had the drawer spacing for the middle section intersecting the outer sections, which wouldn't work. So my solution was to just rip some half inch plywood scrap and glue and nail it to the inner bulkheads, effectively creating a dado. Once I cut these pieces, I went ahead and sanded off the rough edge and installed these onto the inner pieces. Now that I have the uprights finished, I can get the shell assembled. And to keep things easy, I am just sandwiching the uprights in between the top and the bottom. I use a 23 gauge pin nailer to get the parts lined up and tacked together. And then I follow that up with some two inch screws. I used some corner clamping jigs to hold the parts upright while gluing them and then I just reinstalled those on the inside to keep everything as square as possible. I also chose not to glue the two inner supports. It's really not necessary and it saves me the hassle of having to clean up the glue and fight the pieces in while they're glued, which you know I would get everywhere. Once all four uprights are attached, I can go ahead and flip this entire assembly over and get the bottom screwed on. Not having the two inner supports um, glued and screwed, I have a little bit of leeway and movement and I'm able to just push them over where I need them to be and get those installed. After that, I can pull all the clamps and get it installed in the bench. If you didn't catch the bench build video, I will leave a link for that in the description. Make sure to check it out. In that video, I used sand to create some mass and a low center of gravity for the bench until I could build this cabinet, which once loaded full of tools will do the exact same thing. The reason I started out with the sand is I didn't know how long it was going to take until I did get a cabinet built for this. It ended up being a lot shorter time period. Um, I probably should have just saved the money on the sand and built the cabinet because I started building the cabinet pretty much as soon as I finished the bench. 
Now getting the cabinet installed into the bench, it was a tight fit, but I managed to get it done. If I was off a little bit uh, in either direction on the measurements, this probably wouldn't have fit. It took a, just a little bit of coercion to get it put in there. And I noticed that I put it in upside down. So I have to pull it out, flip it over, and install it again. And once I do that, I could just go ahead and tack it into place with a few screws. The next step is to put on a back for the cabinet. And this is going to serve two purposes. It's going to provide backing for the cabinet as well as another clamping surface on the bench. And I'm going to use another piece of 3 quarter inch MDF and continue the same pattern as the workbench top along with some additional horizontal slots. That way I can utilize it for clamping larger parts when I need to. I'm going to use a quarter inch spiral bit to hog out most of the material. And then I'll follow that up with a 14 degree dovetail bit. I don't show or talk a whole lot about that process in this video. I, I do explain that in more detail in the actual bench build video if you want to watch that. Once I'm finished with cutting the grooves, I just set it on the ground and line up where these interior bulkheads are so I can draw some straight lines and install the screws in those centers without poking out the sides. And I just do that with some two inch construction grade screws. Now that we have the cabinet installed and the back put on it, we can go ahead and start getting prepped for making some drawers. And I'll be using the cross-cut jig to cut all of the drawer bottoms. I told you I'd get a lot of use out of this on this project. With all of the bottoms cut, I move on to cutting some rips of half-inch plywood for the drawer frames. Now the jig that I built, it wasn't big enough to accommodate the half sheets of plywood. So I kind of rigged up a temporary one on the workbench using some CA glue and blue tape. I needed about 30 strips of differing widths and figured this would be the quickest way to do it. Once I finished the rips, I could cut all of the parts of the drawers with a pull saw. Now I didn't mind taking a little extra time doing it this way and I really kind of enjoyed it. I also felt I would get better consistent results for assembling doing it this way instead of using the circular saw and I don't have a miter saw in this shop. I found as I get older I really like incorporating a little bit of hand tool use with the power tools. It's a welcome break to just kind of chill out and relax for a little while and I think part of that comes with getting older and having more patience. It's certainly not something I would have practiced doing when I was younger. Now that all the individual parts for the drawers have been cut, the next step was to put a finger pole on the drawer fronts. I could have used an actual knob or a pole, but I have used this method on other cabinets and it's just a super simple way to do this. Now my drill press isn't strong enough to power a big Forstner bit, so I'm doing these with my Rockler drill guide and a cordless drill. Now on this day I was kind of being impatient and not thinking too clearly and I started to assemble some of the drawers prior to doing this step. Once I realized that I kind of stopped in my tracks and was able to utilize the back panel to clamp them to the table. And I drilled out those two before I moved forward. Then I finished up the rest of them. And I'm just using a couple scraps of plywood here for a backer and making the cut. Before I start doing any of the assembly, I will go ahead and give the bottoms a quick sand. I go around the edges on both sides just to remove any of the fuzz and slight tear out from the circular saw. And then I can start putting these together. 
Now I assembled drawers with some glue and pin nails. Normally since this is shop furniture, I would do all of the drawer assembly with a quarter inch narrow crown stapler. I don't have one here in this space or an air compressor. And so I'm using what I have on hand. Um, I do have glue and I do have this pin nailer. So I just glue and pin the frame together, making sure that the bottom where the plywood attaches is flat. That way any inconsistencies don't affect the bottom and how it slides in the dados. I am purposely installing the back of the drawer in a couple of inches. So when it's open all the way, so to speak, it doesn't fall out. Does that make sense? Then I can countersink and permanently attach it with screws. Now this is pretty junky plywood, but it's the best they had when I was at the store. So I'm going ahead and pre-drilling it, which I would do anyways, so I don't blow out any of the sides. Then I use some inch and a quarter star drive screws to fasten it. Now I know this method might be overkill, but it's just kind of what I do. I would rather overbuild something than have to do it twice. Especially on these shallower drawers, I very easily could have used a thinner material probably on the bottoms. But rather than risk it, I just did it this way. And speaking of shallow drawers, I decided to put a lot more shallow drawers in this bench build than I have otherwise. I would rather have less stuff in a drawer that I can see than layers of stuff that I have to dig through to find. I would like to know in the comments uh, what everybody else prefers. Are you a shallow drawer person or a deep drawer person? Anyways, overall, I think this project turned out pretty well. It's going to serve my current needs perfectly. And what's going to make me happy now is that I can clean up all of this stuff that's piled up around the shop. If you enjoyed this project, please like and subscribe and share it with somebody that might benefit from it as well. And remember to dream big, be positive, inspire others, and get out there and make something today. I'll see you on the next one.